Hello everyone, now we're going to be playing some more of Wonders. So let's continue where we left off uh, with the Cult of Storms campaign. So when we last left off, kind of to a point of not really having a whole lot to do because we're pretty much just waiting for our allies to all duke it out. Which I have been considering just like declaring war on all of them after situating myself exactly where I need to be to assassinate the leader and just going for that I should say if I do that I'll probably go for the orcs because there's to start with because granted they're very close I think they pretty much sort of surround my territory but also they're the only ones without any allies whatsoever other than me but I think what I'll do first is see if there's anywhere to like explore You know, like, he, like for instance, uh, this dungeon over here, and just like get some like items and, and the like, and just sort of see what happens while you just sort of wander around exploring. Well, you know, the AIs do hook it out. And we'll just see where we're at. And after, you know, I get some nice items, hopefully. So I, think, I think the dwarves have a lot of potential. Like... They, they've been expanding quite a bit. I mean... It's currently... Sort of two teams. Because we've got the... Elves, uh, not the elves, the dwarves and the halflings on a team, and the humans and the Azarks are on a team, and then you've got the uh, the orcs that just hate everyone uh, except me. Which I mean, humans and Azarks are both neutral, and dwarves and halflings are both good, so. That's probably why, you know, they, they sort of gravitated towards each other. Meanwhile, I'm the closest thing to another evil character, even though I'm technically neutral despite being a Storm Lord. But because in Age of Wonders, there was one and two in Shadow Magic. Alignment is race-based. You know, it kind of unsavory product of the time. Yeah, you know, well, most fantasy games have been moving away from oh, this race is always evil because you know that has that has some real icky cat undertones. <laughs> But like, 
you know, as a Stormlord, I'm the closest thing to another evil character here currently, so... You know, it's, it's honestly more about alignment. It's mostly just everybody's fighting everybody else that's not of their alignment, except for me. Do you mean, if I wanted to join the side of my alignment, technically that would be... I mean, technically I could, like, sort of turn the numbers somewhat in favor of the neutral alignment. You know, if I were to go with the side of my character's actual alignment. Like, I am going the truly neutral route of not fighting anyone right now. Instead, just sort of exploring. And... Assassinating anyone that doesn't like me. Yeah, that's a real impressive of an eye beam, beam beholder. You know, it's missed literally every time. <laughs> you know, I've got, as far as I can tell, the highest stat you can get in defense. And it's the first strike against me from that enemy each and every time. When it, Got Ring of Protection and Ring of Regeneration. Fortunately, I've got two ring slots. Just as soon as the game wants to let me actually. Oh, guess it just lagged. Lagged or something. Yeah. Just lagging a bit. So now I've got Regeneration and Ring of Protection, so now I've got Regeneration and plus one, and to do, do my a resistance. So on the off chance I do get injured, I have an increased rate of healing. <laughs> Here's somewhere where that hasn't been explored. She hasn't she doesn't seem to have been doing much exploration. They've mostly just been fighting each other. It's gonna take about an in-game week. To get into those ruins, but hopefully it'll be worth it. And again, mostly just killing time. And then while I wait for as to bring each other down. Which I know the AI is perfectly capable because like last scenario the the human then leader just sort of got killed killed spontaneously without me doing anything to him. <laughs> Plus like does what appear to be major sieges about to happen? He's like, right over here, there's a bunch of, bunch of Azar air controlled units gathering outside an Orcus city. 
And again, they might not have a siege weapon with them. No, they definitely have a way to break down the wall. We've got a multitude of elephants. So that can't be why they haven't made a move. I mean, at least if they do, if they are in fact in some kind of like stalemate, I can just, you know, start picking them off. Oh, looks like they took that city. It's like, oh, and there's. This leader of the orcs right there. So if they just go for it, they might be able to take him down. Which means that would then be just the sort of food of you know factions. Of good, good and neutral fighting each other. <laughs> you know, I made this interesting early on by creating a couple power vacuums <laughs> via killing off the elf and, and and undead leaders because they immediately decided. No, they didn't like me, so... <coughs> the, ch the humans that own a lot of the like, bottom of the screen... Mostly, yeah, mostly just biding my time, waiting to see what happens. And the right side, need a up move to make. Shoot. And considering at least like writing up a build for Crows in the Pathfinder 2nd edition and they've got, they've got a new book out today and it actually it adds a lot to a potential Crows build because for the first time in then the history of Paizo's systems in general, you can actually play an assassin without having to be strictly evil. Or devoting yourself to some kind of like holy order. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure for, as a result, the assassin is even like half time to say legal, because usually the Pathfinder is to say organized play, they don't allow you to be evil because as that when you're gaming with strangers, that that opens up a whole realm of possible oh well, like uncomfortable well if not outright unsettling situations. Like I feel like it takes a lot of trust to be able to play with somebody who's who's playing an evil character to make sure that they don't go no far too far make it horrifying not only in game but out of game <laughs> mm. 
No. Be be despicable. You, you, have, have your character do, you know, terrible, terrible things all you want, but like, th there are certain points where like you you have to question, well, you you know. Well, you start to wonder if this person, if the person behind the character is okay. Especially if they get like really creatively messed up. Plus, you know, they has boundaries. And, and the evil characters have a tendency to get very close to those. Okay, like that's probably part of why Twitch actually has a tag for when you're playing like D and D and Pathfinder, like for when. The, characters are evil so people tuning in know roughly some measure of what kind of morality to expect coming from the PCs closest I've ever come to playing an evil character in a tabletop role-playing game is at one time one of my Pathfinder Society characters did to drop from being chaotic good to chaotic neutral because he shot a horse in the face because that, that was my solution to needing to get a horse out of the way These days, I'd go for something at least more creative than just shoot it in the face. Because, <laughs> I mean, I was playing a gunslinger, and I wasn't really used to the system and everything yet. And I was just starting out. No, well, it's just like... So at that point in time, my primary solution to most things was gun. <laughs> After all, I mean, the main reason I picked to play a gunslinger was because it's like, as I looked through the preachings, I was like, you could, you could have guns? I've never seen that in, a fa in most fantasy settings. Although, later in Solomon's Page of Wonders, do actually have like musketeers. Like, that, that's the one time I've ever been any level of excited about guns. Then, I find one that has like a really interesting effect or something in Starfinder. Like, you know, just regular, you know, bullet shooting guns I don't really get that excited about. Uh, I'm just not, just not a gun person. Gotta wait for the aspirants to finish teleporting or whatever they're doing that's making that noise. The only way you'll survive is on your knees. Wait. What's that supposed to mean? Oh. 
It's a dungeon. That that's what that's supposed to mean. I wonder there are there are independent cities still? <laughs> like there's just a random human city over here? Well, yeah, of course we're going to capture it. It's got like two new defenders. Do you mean I'm, I'm entering unexplored territory on the map? Not right now. Since, you know, I, I can see everything my allies see, so... Yeah, if I enter an area that is not revealed on the map, but I am entering completely the new, the completely new frontier. But most of it seems to be blocked by mountains, which seems to just be their way of saying, "We didn't flesh out this part of the map. Go away." <laughs> Let me, I have been considering picking up mountaineering my next level. You know, just, just become completely, he, just, a guitar, there's absolutely no way to stop me from getting to where I need to be. I mean, I can, all, I can already swim. Limbs are like, mountains are the only thing. And I can swim and climb walls, so mountains are the only thing that can stop me from them going places. I don't even know what levels levels you go up to. I imagine you probably go up higher than thirteenth level. Maybe they go oh when you know the tradition of D and D and the like you go up to twentieth. I mean, it would be interesting to, to already be at the level cap and only partway through the campaign. I mean, you would think you would hit the level cap towards the end. Like, I feel like there's still plenty left to go over this playthrough because you know at the rate things are going with the whole plan of wait for the AIs to need to fight each other it looks like, it looks like the dwarves are honing in on the on the humans. There's just, there seems to be a lot less blue down towards the bottom of the mini map. So I'm seeing at least a couple all human cities in the hands of the dwarves. Okay, now where, where am I? Okay, there I am. I misplaced myself off again. It's nice and 
of the ass leaf and evil the he's he's ruins and is completely unexplored. <laughs> In Millie, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if I was at the level cap given how powerful I've already become. With how you know, most enemies find it to nigh impossible to hit me. <laughs> I guess it's one of the few times I've actually been hurt. Because that nymph managed to get a very good slap on me. <laughs> Just to say, she dealt two damage before she died. <laughs> well, this, this centaur also actually managed to hit me. Alright. Got a couple shields. One of poison protection and the other of frost protection. And shield for the bog and frost shield. Do we have any protection abilities already? Do. Just carrying around this that this frost wand gave me frost bolts. Oh, it's kind of item that you just carry. I think I'll go for the Shield of the Bog. Which both... Okay, so it looks like there is in fact a hard cap of 10. Regardless of items. As otherwise... I would have gone up to 11. Wait, see, is there anywhere else to explore? Other than the dungeons, which I'm not super interested in the dungeons because I'd much rather find items than it. In units right now. Okay, doesn't look like there are any explorable locations left to, to get items from on this entire map. I'm also close to home, so... <laughs> Which... Which I mean... I took out somebody other than Thorak. That would also sort of tip the balance. <laughs> so it would eliminate half of an alliance. So I'd say perhaps give them. 
take a few turns. Like, let's say maybe turn 100. Start knocking people down. And things don't happen. Like, this is. This is starting to turn into like. This is practically turning into like. Make a Dangarampa motive at this point. It's like, oh, you know, if you don't, if you don't murder anyone, I'll just kill one of you at random. <laughs> you know, this just clearly, Monokuma ran out of ideas that day. <laughs> Like, he, like, to the point that, he, you know, he did what he, he normally would never do. I mean, I think they did sort of that at one point. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna... Yeah, so you just give them until turn 100 to eliminate somebody and if they don't do it by then I'll, I'll do it myself <laughs> probably just maybe pick off the weakest one which is looking to be the humans should also upset the balance of the alliances if the dwarves don't, don't kill them first. Oh, and I'm out of spells to research too. <laughs> Gonna you get one thing ready. Need for. Once you reach to turn 90, turn 100. Ooh, looks like this battle was either I misclicked or this battle was determined to be important enough since, you know, it appears to have a leader of the orcs involved. Either the orc leader or an orc hero, but even though he's level 13, given that, given that Thorak is involved, I get, yep, alright then, I'm gonna say that, then that's some, um, hmm, I say the nets them another ten turns. Turns before or I start or dropping bodies. <laughs> Does that mean to turn one hundred and ten is when I will intervene directly? <laughs> You know, I do have to be wary. Oh, it looks like they did have a level 13 hero. Oh, 
Alright, if you're going to be a problem... Then I'm just gonna have to... So prove the, the, prove a point, but yes, I I am perfectly willing to kill more. To get this scenario to to reach its conclusion. You know, now there's another land rush as the death of the leader of the orcs caused another power vacuum. Although, unlike the power vacuums I created, the Azraks actually took over the, the city that Thorak resided in. Whereas in my case, I just got in and got out, out and went on my merry way. <laughs> because this has never been about, you know, owning cities for me. This is just, you know, the art of the arch assassination. <laughs> and at this point... Just hope that none of them, you know, think of it turning on me as yeah, unexpectedly. But if any of them break make their alliance, they are immediately getting packed full, full, of, full of arrows. <laughs> You know, just, if this was really anything I want, I would do, uh, do, then the leader of the Azraks would, would get executed. So that that's certainly an option. You know, just just kill 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 the person that killed kill the orc orc guy. I'm I'm content with just you know, you know letting them have until turn one hundred and ten to eliminate another player. I mean, I feel like the humans are getting pretty close. Being eliminated by the dwarves. In which case, I could just take out the Azraks, and that would be it. <laughs> you know. Everybody would be allies with everybody else. Well, it's after that. But you know, I'm gonna give them another 25. I'm gonna give them another 25 turns, as is currently day 85. 
And they did say that we give them day 100 and then extended it by another 10 turns because they did eliminate Thorak. You know, waiting. At least it, it seems to not only show oh, it, the little, you know, on day such and such, so and so was defeated. It, it, the message, but also a recap of the battle. Well, so that that's interesting. Well, I didn't do that uh, to, with the human guy, but that might just be because I never. Uh, that might just be because I never saw. Like, you know, I had not met the people that had killed him for him before, or he died, I'm pretty sure. Like, the, the dwarves have definitely spread far and wide. We the humans just sort of hanging out in this one city over here. <laughs> He's only got two cities left. Help if the AI turns in takes so long. You know, we make we make it the wait for the next twenty one turns a, a bit easier. Ooh, looks like somebody's moving around in the vicinity of the humans. Oh, I think it's just that one halfling ship over there. <laughs> Just the, the Azarks have an altar of life so they're blasting in dwarves with divine magic. And it's like the humans have fire that they can use. Ooh, like... Looks like the leader of the humans may be making some kind of move. Like this is practically just sort of Age of Wonders spectator mode at this point. <laughs> Because, like, I mean, my character's not even on screen right now. <laughs> to, to think the reason I'm not leveling up might be that, like, they have a level cap per scenario or something. Because, I mean, the Leader of the Orcs was also leveled. It was a, also, no level 13. So maybe I'll level up next scenario. <laughs> I 
Ooh, looks like there's a. Ooh, that is a that is a big dwarven army <laughs> heading right towards we the humans. Get the feeling. Ordanos is not long for this world. At least if they make the right move. Because I mean, they just saw a couple units turning back. Ooh, looks like they're going for it. If Rodanos those dies, I'm probably gonna go for the Azrak leader. You know, maybe just maybe just go ahead and strategically place myself both in the right spot. After all, I mean, I doubt he'll suspect a thing. You know, I'm just, I'm just there to visit. You know, we are allies. Or at least, we will be for the Nick. Yep, it does, in fact, show... Ooh, I think they may actually have started out outside of the wall. It does automatically show... No, it, it might just be because, like, my allies are involved, and that's why it's automatically showing me this. He's definitely putting in more of a fight than the orc did. Actually, I mean, the orc took down a good portion of the end of the, their opponent's army, so. So, I like it. Yeah, the. The human leader's army is about down, but also so is the dwarven army. <laughs> Ooh, he just took a real bad hit there. Yep, there he goes. On day 95, the Empire of the Humans, led by Herodanos, was defeated. Oh, really? Really, you're gonna be like that? <laughs> well then! Guess it's time, time to kill... All the dwarves. I thought I was just gonna take out the Azrax and that would be it. But no, the dwarves had to make it difficult. Especially since now I can't see half the map. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to wander around until I can find and the halflings have decided to turn on me as well. Well then that makes two assassinations to do. Should have known a Stormlord couldn't trust halflings and dwarves. Those for very long. 
you know, they do tend to align themselves with the keepers. Half the map, so all right. There's a there's the leader of the halflings. I am going to save this just in case it goes catastrophically, but I doubt it, given that I've. I'm nigh impossible to hit half the time. <laughs> because, you know, I have effectively a 12. Oh, defense. Against the first strike against me. Oh, but... But an Eagle Rider did manage to hit me. You know, got lucky in his shot. Hey, it's nothing that I won't heal later after this job is done. Especially the, if I can then get, especially since I have regeneration now. Oh, oh fuck you too. I'm just gonna stand here, I guess, for three rounds. Because, like, I'm still so hard to hit that entanglement is kind of just an inconvenience. Like, like previously it was a death sentence for me, but now, but like, you know, it's like, no, oh, it's no longer, oh, you have outsmarted me. You have used my, you have used one of my greatest weaknesses against me. It's, wow, rude. They have been getting some good hits in on me. But for one thing, only so many of them can crowd around me at any given time. And I mean, I'm still, in spite of the good hits, I'm still... I still got the greater half of my health. <laughs> and also I just became unentangled. So... I just slammed down on pretty much all the, all the weak units surrounding me. Alright, which one of the um, views later? Okay, it's a, it's a mirror death. Well, mirror death is about to be mirror dead. Or not, apparently. Oh, good thing I saved.
Alright, just gonna get on over to the wall. Just hop on up. And hopefully don't get entangled this time. Or at the very least, don't get hit quite so many times. Which I means mostly because I got entangled that they were able to hit me that much. Because I believe entanglement does cause a penalty to your defense. Since you know stops you from being able to dodge around. Oh, and of course. Of course I've gotta do it. Oh, time to wait. Need three turns. So far, they've been unable to hit me. Oh, the giant frog. Dealt a whole three damage to me. And now I'm unentangled again. When they got a couple lucky hits. <laughs> yep, I'm at six. So now I know. Don't try and melee Meredith uh, when you're already kind of badly injured. Because if they get one good hit on you, you're toast. Despite having good defense. Oh, fuck you too. Alright, time to try that again. Because, like, ultimately, ha half of it is just sort of RNG. I'm pretty sure, you know, straight up does sort of a D and D esque dice roll against the DC based on your your stats. Don't know how many sides the die has, but I'm pretty sure one of the later installments does actually let you look at the math. If if this one doesn't. Yeah, because this one doesn't have a combat log uh, for tactical combat, so I think it was like the second game or its standalone expansion, Shadow Magic, that uh, added in the combat log and the ability to actually see the math of how all this goes down. Got the best stats I can have, just about, other than like more health. Like, it, you know, it's not for lack of defense. I don't know 
what it is that is causing these basic halfling units to manage to get hits on me. Big thing is it? Oh, and the catch the fucking entanglement again. And they're managing to hit me while I'm entangled. Sitting at two. So pretty much any hit that actually managed to hit me is gonna take me down. Well, that's Meredith. Getting real, real annoyed, Meredith. Getting real tired of bullshit. This one does not work out. I'll bring like a couple units as a distraction. Then again, that means heading back to one of my cities and bringing some units all the way over here. It's like the, this is probably. Oh, they they failed to entangle me. That means a wasted mana on failing to entangle me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Perhaps, perhaps this one could work. Since if they failed to entangle me, then that means. they have less mana for casting spells on me. Can I actually select myself? Perhaps I will do a little spell casting of my own. With Sheen Lightning. Well, that was certainly effective because now they're a lot of them are stunned. <laughs> A 
Although they've still got heroes, so they're still getting spell casting. Aimer Death is now no longer stunned. So they get double spell casting on each turn. It's too bad my hero oh, died mid so early on. Yeah, double being able to spell cast and being able to, for instance, spell and cast a spell and shoot arrows on the same turn would be real good. Or double arrow, or double archery, or or double spell casting. Like you know, I feel like a lot of it is the action economy is getting me. Hello? Got Meredith pretty close to being down, but now I'm entangled. Because of course. I mean, that, that was a pretty good spell. Like, I mean... In one of mul uh, one of these attempts, that spell knows what did me in. Well, Mare Death is now Mare Dead. I've been waiting to make that pun <laughs> throughout all of those attempts. Now, just to find the leader of the dwarves. Just find I can just find my way to wherever Angrass is it is and take him down. Then that'll be he it for this scenario. You know, so got like mountains to deal with. Of course, you know, can't see into the dwarven territory. Without physically going there, they decided to uh, be the assholes, and now they're gonna. You now their leaders are gonna die. <laughs> that's that's what happens when you turn against the things that. Evermore's greatest archer assassin. <laughs> Alright, no, no Dwarven Leader there, just a bunch of like giants and things and shit. <laughs> if 
could be interesting to take care of to uh, it would have been interesting to take care of how to clear the doors in the very place that had to that the leader of the humans died and then some doors over here Again, no sign of the leader. It, it appears that I'm being pursued. <laughs> no dwarven leader here. <laughs> Hello, and grass. <laughs> No sign of Dorn later on any of the currently visible fronts. That is it that is so far. Which looks like the Azraks are mounting an offensive. Uh, which it, you know can't find the leader of the dwarves and then maybe the Azraks can. Gonna teleport wherever this takes me. Let me do more dwarves. Still no sign of the head dwarf himself. I mean, I'll know as soon as the Azraks find them. Or at the very least, you know, keep just sort of scanning the mini map on occasion. It'll show me. Plus, if they engage me in combat, it looks like they, that also will automatically sort of notify me that, you know, it's going down. <laughs> Ooh, here's here's some dwarves. Which actually, I think I think I already confirmed earlier that this is not where I need to be, unless Ingress has shown up here recently. No sign of him over there. Just two dwarves in, in the city. Which I do not like the look, looks of these two. These two squads over here. Which is I can probably take them. I'd rather not have to. In fact, do they just try to blast me with something? <laughs> so I am going to start. Preparing warp party just in case. I need to make an abrupt exit from my current locale. No Dwarven leader here. Hmm. 
perhaps over this way. This is, this is slowly turning into a Lunar situation. Only at least there's no time limit. Come on, where are you, Angrass? <laughs> right. Still, still nowhere to be seen. I'm being attacked by a random ship. Like, javelins can rarely hurt me at this point. So my defense is just too good. It's like it's more, it's more of a nuisance than anything. There's some substantial halfling forces over here that decide to attack me. archery as much as possible, get them to waste their healing, believe you can only heal once per instance of the healing ability basically. One of them did hurt me, so that's not great. You know, not a huge fan of random halflings managed to, managing to actually injure me. <laughs> Especially since, you know, kind of assessing your Specifically, so that I did not have to deal with this. Or did it? Did it just? Collapse from its own fire or something? <laughs> really? Really? I was done in by random halflings? Well then. Guess I'm reloading. Gonna get what party ready. And hey, at least now I have a clear idea where Angras mo most likely is not. So I can just let's go right to places where he might be. Oh, that's not where I need to be. It's just 
for random dwarves. I need a very specific dwarf. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes the halflings just get good hits on me. You know, right? <laughs> to me, I, I don't have a lot of rings. I, it's just a one ring, well, two rings. <laughs> Maybe because I've got my ring of regeneration and I've got my ring that just like protects me, me, me from the uh, magic stuff. Still no, no, no angrass over there, nor over there. <laughs> I, I get the reference into I get it immediately, but I got it. <laughs> No. Maybe over here? I don't think I've checked over here yet. Actually, no, I think. Yeah, I have checked over there. I think probably over here somewhere, so like all the way like on the other side of the map. Fortunately it only takes about a week to get across. It was the same halflings that did me in last time. <laughs> and here we go again. <laughs> Alright, if, if I die this time, I just need to not go into this area, I guess. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna plot some magic. See how they like some chain lightning. Stuns eating on some of them. That's a big help. I mean, usually them attacking me is not an issue. Because I've literally got my defense as high as it will go. That's why I can be blasted in the face with fire and come out just completely unscathed.
That's the same guy that did me in last time. <laughs> Better get him out of the way. That should have this, this battle pretty well all wrapped up. Yep, actually won this time. <laughs> The start and get work party already prepared again. Just in case you know I need it. Well it's been a while since I actually like genuinely needed it and had to use it. At least things are moving a bit faster now because there's only three new players left. Well, four technically if you count the independents. <laughs> uh, make my way across the map to where. Hopefully, the leader of the dwarves is. Some reason has decided. Not let me move. I think it might have just lagged the something is clearly wrong. I'm going to Save the game and restart it real quick. Because that should not that have been happening. Hmm. Seems there was just something blocking my route over that way for some reason. Not sure why. I mean, it could have just been like an allied army or something that I couldn't learn to occupy the same tile with or something. <laughs> Might want to work party now. Not, not how concerned these guys are gonna actually like be a real threat to me just for the sake of not having to deal with them. Well, that's annoying. It decided that I couldn't move until all these guys attacked me. Now I have to deal with this. Right now we're in archery range right now. Guess I'm not parting out of this. 
Alright, one of them is in chain lightning range, however. Yeah, there's some people in archery range. Ooh, and one of them just got a real good hit on me. At least I'm just sort of falling like dominoes. <laughs> you know. Bunch of units that can't really do a whole lot to me. <laughs> well, they do have a leprechaun with them, and those are of a difficulty to hit. It kind of rivals my own. <laughs> so that's not that great. And there I go again. Well then. I can just and unfortunately now the save starts me off here <laughs> just get a Maybe go for a different route. Get to where I need to be. And here's this random ship. I don't even know who owned this before. Presumably the halflings. But like, who knows? There's so many independent units just sort of wandering around. Well, that you can never really tell. Well, it's... machines don't actually state the, like affiliate nation, and uh, unless they're actually controlled by a player. At least I've got my ring for generation, so I heal faster. situation and it got me closer to my destination and just by lucky coincidence <coughs> and again you know I don't even know if the no, Fangrass is even here. Oh, he's right here. Good to see you. Yeah, you, dude. <laughs> it's time to die. <laughs> oh, 
Right, nobody's in chain lightning range. Which means that nobody's in archery range either. Which probably should have saved. Because given how long it took me to kill all the halfling, who knows how many tries it's gonna take me need to kill this guy. really did just entangle me. Which means I believe it's C minus two to defense. Which basically just like cancels out my parry on the first hit and then makes the other hits a bit easier. Like, largely, it's just a return inconvenience. <laughs> Since I can't do anything while well entangled. Well, I am nearly dead, and there we go. Well, at least now I know where I need to need to go. So, like that's that's something. Still have no idea why it won't let me go over here. <laughs> now it's just time to keep re rolling the RNG. I mean, managed to take out his halfling friend after like five tries. <laughs> Gonna save. Now that I'm in the general vicinity of where I need to, of the, apparently where I need to be. Just gotta make my way over to where the actual, like, you know, guy is. Which if I can get to him before he's, you know, battle ready, basically, then I might have an easier time. I think that I think that might be him over there. Yep, it is indeed. So unfortunately, since this is out in the open, I don't have any city walls I can take advantage of. Because normally, like, 
it takes some like at least a turn to be able to reach me he if they have to go through the walls of their own city gonna chain lightning right there Ooh, that they got ingress in it To be stunned, and that means he cannot personally entangle me. I'll have to rely on any heroes he's got with him, which he does have a hero with him. He does have spell casting for. Is therefore able to potentially entangle me. So to my knowledge, like I'm pretty sure in later installments of the series, the first game you share your spell repertoire with any heroes you have. And there's the entanglement. And there's there's a good hit on me right off the bat. And I think I'm probably dead on the second turn of the entanglement. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll pull through this. Because I mean, I'm no longer entangled, which means I can fight back. Except I just died. <laughs> Well, at least it got to the right place. Use it. Use before her saving. I I'm not sure if life seal is even a thing in the, uh, the first game. Like I mean. When I'm not entangled, I don't really need healing because I just simply don't get hurt. Perhaps I could take over the city and strategically leverage its walls hmm then they'll probably just not bring any grass and that's that's no good they need the big man and himself to be in on this Honestly, it's, it's mostly just RNG, which I mean, given given how much, uh, I'm not sure Life Seal would be able to do much for me since a lot of the time when they're attacking me, I can't, I can't even fight back because I'm entangled. Right. Chain Lightning. Stun both Angras and his hero.
Does he think the hero got stunned? Actually, no, he's fine. Yeah, as many of these guys use as I can before getting entangled. They seem to entangle at the end of their turn. Turn rather than. It. Which I mean, you know, why waste his mana on. It, on, it, on casting a spell on something that your just regular units can kill? And again, the only reason they're able to kill me is because they just about is because unless they keep entangling me. <laughs> like I mean, the strategy worked out with very similar circumstances. Against honestly, the leader of the halflings, so it just took multiple tries to get the RNG to need to treat me just right. I have no spells I can cast. And I did not mean to move just then. But hey, it worked out in my favor. And there we go again. <laughs> Which if my plan from earlier had worked out, then I wouldn't even be fighting the dwarves. I would just be assassinating the leader of the Azrax instead. After they took it, after the dwarves took out uh, the leader of the humans, they decided to, uh, to come after me. So, you know, I've got to kill two leaders instead of just one. Of course, admittedly, hmm, could probably take this city and just like produce a unit there. Possibly, just like produce a quick unit. A random dwarf axe man to sort of draw aggro. Ooh, they're they're also going to be distracted by walls. If not for the fact that I just moved out of the city, and so oh now I'm having to fight them in, in the open again. See, some pain chain lightning range, nope. Alright, go forth, Dwarven Shield. Which <laughs> did they're immediately <laughs> this poor dwarf whose entire point of existing is to be a meat shield <laughs> so 
You know what? Just gonna center the chain lightning on the leader and it was completely ineffective. Wow. At least I'm not entangled yet. So that's something. And I've taken out some of their, their soldiers before getting entangled, before inevitably getting entangled. <laughs> and so for not taking any damage. Uh, well, I'm at my most defenseless which is to say I have a penalty to my defense that is otherwise perfect Oof. Oof. well man just hit me See, and the RNG is doing a little bit better for me, or not. <laughs> or I think, 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 the, the Dwarven Meat Shield plan might just work. Especially if I stay within the city and let them come to me. Uh, wait for finish the turns. Hop on over to the city over here. Cue up some Axemen. I think I would queue up some some boar riders, but I think they'll they'll take too long. Uh, last time I only had like the one turn. Well, looks like you've got two turns this time, which means double the meat shields. Which I mean, admittedly, kind of going for quantity over quality me with this. <laughs> yeah, they're not here to actually, like, kill enemy units. They're here to, they're here to help me live a little bit longer. <laughs> All right, got three meat shields. Well, the end of wall. <laughs> so maybe, just maybe, this one will work out out, out in my favor. That there for once. Well, you know, multiple tries. Gonna sort of go into the proper archer position of right near the wall. Of 
Because I've got to be careful not to like do when they're. Honestly, I kind of have to let them in basically. Because, like, if I destroy their, their battering ram, they'll, they'll just retreat. So, like, well, I guess I could work that to my advantage, too, since if they retreat, then, then that means... Then the I get then the I can still weaken their forces. Then that is before they retreat. Like shoot. The meat shields have taken have like gotten some good hits in on it. On some of the weaker or enemies. It's like maybe they will serve more purposes than just distraction. <laughs> I mean, I've yet to I've yet to be entangled, so like things are already looking better than they were before in pretty much any of my previous attempts. I'm pretty much out, I'm out of meat shields and I am entangled but their forces are weaker like they've mostly just got like a hero and a frog they can send after me and their leader but like do they really want to send their leader after me? <laughs> And if I live long enough to become unentangled, I can start her beating ass. <laughs> Still one more turn with me being entangled. Oh, they're, they're burning down my building. They're, technically, they're basically burning down their own buildings. <laughs> because, like, these are hardly mine. I'm just... I just took over this city for the strategic scenery, basically. <laughs> Like it's more it's more their buildings that are getting burned down. Really? Three entanglements in a row. <laughs> but they're hardly they're hardly hurting me. Even with three entanglements. Oh I mean the I am getting pretty hurt now. <laughs> or if I can just... And... Got hit by a rock and died. <laughs> Alright, that... 
that did surprise that worked surprisingly well. So I'd say maybe that's the strategy at this point. Just to hole up in the city, produce some meat shields, and Wells and just eat. rain down as much, as much damage as I can on it. On the, the actual, on, the, on you know, their actual leader. Fortunately, they got this city that's just conveniently unguarded. <laughs> Like the, the dwarf axemen have been working pretty well as meat shields, so wonder if I could also. We do have summon spells, but they take three whole turns. Ooh, it could also tornado. Like if I had five turns, I could tornado. <laughs> All right, come at me. You know, you know, you want to. Oh, first, first I thought that maybe this extra group of units was not present, but no, they're still definitely here. <laughs> Ooh, looks like they're... Well, that foiled my whole plan. <laughs> because they, they just murdered all the meat shields in one turn before I even got to leave the wall. Like, before, before I even got a turn, all my meat shields were dead. Because they decided to double earthquake on me. <laughs> Me on the plus side, they that hurt basically everybody because, like, now I can because they hurt their, their own units real bad, so like. <laughs> The Baron Ram is just like, I'm doing things, I'm doing things. <laughs> never mind the walls, but never mind, this whole portion of the city has just about been completely. Alright, see ya. Oh. Oh, there's a hurricane coming? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they'll probably get to migrate to lizards if I survive this. But then again, the scenario will be over, so. But thanks for watching. Ooh. Let me do that. Getting hit real bad. Alright then. Hey. 
I hate it. They're almost out. They're just about out of units, so. And there we go. About time. Wait, really? I have to kill the Azrax too? You're, you're really making me do this? There's really no way I can just have an allied victory. I have to kill everyone. I don't care what happens to that one city. Well then, I guess I've gotta... At least I know exactly where where, where the Azark leader is. ship is just really another one <laughs> am I just gonna have to sink a whole independent navy because I'll do it it'll be mostly just time-consuming hurt me with their javelins. Now we're just gonna wander on over to the desert because for some reason allied victory is not a thing. Yeah, I have access to a tornado twister. And it says a troll fittingly on a bridge. <laughs> Fortunately, I can just walk right around. I don't care. I, I really don't care what happens to this one city. Yeah, as long as, as long as I'm alive, if I'm pretty much good. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. I'd like to have a, had a chance to cast my tornado, but no, no, I did not save after. Oh well, I think I think auto save got it for me. Frack is the one I need to target. Let's 
Casting one. At least you don't think he think this guy's got any kind of earth magic. So I don't believe he's got access to new entanglement. So we just got a lot of elephants. <laughs> Including one that actually managed to hurt me. Really? Even you have access to entanglement? <laughs> Getting real sick of this entanglement business. Especially since, you know, I'm not in a situation where I can use my meat shield mill strat from one last time. Wow, wait, we could be a bunch of cowards. They're running away as soon as it looks like I'm, they might be dead. Never mind, I'm... Never mind, your army is dropping like flies. Got <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you too, Rujin. Right. Okay, that's... That's from... That's from literally right before the combat started. Alright. Really? I didn't run away far enough? Oh, it's a different group of units. Lovely. I have to deal with these assholes. At least they can't entangle me. So that's something I think I've got going for me in this fight. Unfortunately, I can't cast any spells, so I'll, without losing my tornado. Really do without this thing being surprisingly hard to hit as well. At least it can't do anything with his dominate ability. How did you even attack me from over there? <laughs> I can I just cannot catch a break. <laughs> just gonna wait for them to come come to me. Yeah. 
to get them in archery range. without all these small squads of units coming after me while I'm trying to cast a tornado especially the especially not in having them kill me just gonna run over here And I ran too far. <laughs> at least, at least I can fight this squad at full health. Perhaps I can seize this tower fort and take advantage of the wall. Not to mention the ability to see my surroundings more easily. Spell casting and tornado. All right, if you want to come right at me, by all means. <laughs> come after me with basically just you and a handful of miscellaneous units and just about everybody got stunned by that <laughs> Once again with the entanglement. And, and the fire. Get a few good shots in on them. Alright, it's just you and me. And there we go. <laughs> Had to kill literally every other leader, or just about, but I did it. <laughs> the river's binge. The river's, the river's cleared of rebellion. And the lizardmen rejoice while all others hungrily eye the expanse just beyond its banks. I can see now that they may have a greater appetite for conquest than I had than previously thought. It is time I started drawing them back within the reach of my control, or I may risk breaking them apart. Uh, the, the time, time to be used is over. Now that I was time 
to nudge the for this force in the direction of the bright star which calls to me. I will not fight for the lizards any longer. Instead, they will fight for me. Which I mean, getting somewhat close to the Valley of Wonders. Let's see, that's going to do it for Rage of Wonders tonight. Which has been live for two and a half hours. That was their bounce. So I'd say maybe like some quick arena. Gonna stop and restart stream and be back with arena. So anybody who's not sticking around for not for that or whoever is watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. Next stream will be Saturday night with. Of Crusader Kings 2. Who? Oh.